Just going to church and going home and going to church and going home, going to church and going home doesn't necessarily change your lifestyle. You have to allow your lifestyle to be confronted by the Word of God. I want to talk to you this weekend about enjoying your life. And when I say enjoying your life, I don't mean living in a party, living on vacation all the time, always getting to do everything that you want to do. I'm talking about really enjoying life. Enjoying life. Now, after I decided that I was going to do this series this weekend, I'd already decided, made my mind up. I looked back to see what I taught when I was here five years ago. And it was interesting to me to find that then I taught on the secrets to being a happy Christian. I thought, well, these guys out here must really need some help in staying happy. I don't know. <laughs> so, in the world we live in today, I think we do need a little help being reminded to enjoy life as we go along. Wouldn't you say so? Because there are many joy suckers out there. They're all over the place. They come in many different forms and fashions, and it's the devil working behind all of them because one thing the enemy does not want you to do is have joy because joy is your strength, and joy is a weapon. It's a weapon against the enemy. The Bible says that God sits in the heavens and laughs at his enemies. I believe that our joy is a weapon. Does God really want us to enjoy life? Tonight I want to talk to you, I'm just calling this message, giving yourself permission to enjoy life. Now I don't know where you're at in this, maybe some of you don't have a real problem with it, you may just be one of those little people that wake up every morning happy and you're not a workaholic and you don't bother much with condemnation, but then there's another whole race of people who just seem to be workaholics and they're responsible not only for their stuff but everybody else's stuff too. And they're always trying to rescue somebody and fix somebody and somehow or another if they're not working and accomplishing and doing and producing they just don't feel right. They think they always need to be doing something and I grew up in a home where joy was not a premium. There wasn't much of it. It was full of fear and I can actually remember being getting in trouble from my dad for laughing out loud. If he didn't want to hear laughing then nobody laughed and so I I never really got to be a kid because of the abuse, the sexual abuse from my dad in my childhood and just the violence and the rage and all the weird things that were going on in what we now call a dysfunctional home. We didn't have that word back then, but believe me, it was dysfunctional even though we didn't have the word to describe it. And um, I believe that every healthy adult must have a healthy child on the inside of them. I never got an opportunity to, to be a child. I don't ever remember being a child. I don't ever remember not having a burden or a responsibility or something to be responsible for or something to be concerned about. And when you, when you don't get that, and you know, not all of you miss that, but many of you probably, do. how many of you say that you never really got an opportunity to really just kick back and be a real good healthy child? Well, see, that's, that's a whole lot of folks. And so even if you're not one of them, even if you're one of the ones that was raised properly in a, in a home that was functioning properly, there's a very good possibility that you are in relationship with somebody who wasn't raised the right way. So even this will help you understand them and help you pray for them. And I think even if you were raised marvelously, the world we live in today, if you don't make a decision that you're going to enjoy your life, then you're going to miss a lot of it. And I believe that enjoying life is a decision. I believe the greatest gift that God has given every one of us is the ability to choose. We talk about the gifts that God gives us, and I think He does give us abilities. Some sing, some are great at sports. I happen to be good at talking. I'm a good communicator. You know, different people are good at different things, and we call those the gifts that God gives us, and they are. But the gift, the real gift that God gives us is this, this freedom of choice, because no matter what kind of 
other talents you have, if you don't choose to do the right thing with them, you'll never develop them or use them for anything that's going to bring blessing to you or anybody else. I don't think we realize what a privilege and a responsibility it is to have the right of free choice. And I want to tell you tonight that you can choose to enjoy your life. You don't have to want somebody else's. You can choose to enjoy your life. Now, right about now, some of you think that I have maybe don't have all my senses working right because you think, ah, you don't know the life I got, lady. If you had my life, you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Well, I have to disagree with you because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when the Apostle Paul was standing in a prison cell, if you do enough study, you find out that the place that he was at was where the sewage ran through the city. And they believe that he was probably standing in human waste about up to his ankles. And he said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. So there's something there that we need to get hold of that in the 21st century, we often miss because we are addicted to comfort and we are addicted to getting our own way and we don't know quite as much about the joy of the Lord as we should know. Amen? So, you know, I've been living a long time and <laughs> the longer you live, the more you learn. And you spend about the first at least I did. I can't say for sure what you'll do, but I spent about the first 40 years just living really stupid. And uh, even a lot of those years, I was a Christian, but I still didn't know how to live. You know, just going to church and going home and going to church and going home, going to church and going home doesn't necessarily change your lifestyle. You have to allow your lifestyle to be confronted by the Word of God. The truth ha has to come to us through study. And as we apply that truth to our word, things begin to, the, to our life, things begin to change. So one of the things that I never did much was enjoy anything. I mean, I was a good mother. I didn't necessarily enjoy my kids. It wasn't that, I mean, it, I loved my kids, but I honestly didn't know how to stop working long enough to enjoy my kids. I was so busy taking care of everything. And some of you are right, you're just like, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I, I guess that sounds terrible to say I didn't enjoy them. Well, I mean, that's probably like not a really good way to put it. I mean, I did enjoy them, but I didn't enjoy them like Dave did. I mean, Dave would take the time to play with them. I took care of them. <laughs> See, I did the work. I'm the only one around here that does any work. The rest of you are just goof-offs and you play all the time, but I do the work. I got some sisters going on here tonight, I can see. But see, I could have enjoyed my life. I didn't have to do nothing but work. I was way out of balance, way, way, way overly complicated. And for those of you who need help, I'm going to try to help you this weekend with a lot of these things. But first of all, I had to be convinced that joy was godly. <laughs> I had to be convinced that God actually really, that he really, really wanted me to enjoy everything that I did. That it really is the will of God that we not just go to work, but we enjoy our work. That we not just have a home that we keep clean so we can impress people that come over that we don't even like but that we can actually enjoy that home, that we can take the time to enjoy it. The Bible says that a woman should enjoy her husband. Well, that went over big. Well, at least we all know where we're at, so. Most of us are too busy trying to get them all to be what we want them to be to stop long enough to enjoy them, right? So. Let's look at a scripture, John 10, 10. Enjoying life is pretty important to me. That's why I, why I call my television program Enjoying Everyday Life. And I want you to notice the everyday part. Enjoy everyday, ordinary, 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, back to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday life. God's will for you is enjoyment. How many of you would say that you really do need to enjoy your life a lot more than what you do? Okay. I just want to check and see if I had the right crowd. John 10, 10, the thief who happens to be the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the deceiver, the liar, the murderer, comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Now I want to stop for just a moment and give you a little brush up lesson on the devil. I went to church for maybe seven, eight, nine, maybe even 10 years. Every week, didn't even know the devil was real. I thought it was just some, he was just some Halloween character with a red, with a pitchfork and a red suit and a tail. I, how could you be in church that many years and never hear anything about Satan, who is your greatest enemy? People don't like to talk about the devil. I don't particularly like to talk about the devil. I don't like to give him my time, but I do believe that we have to make people aware that he is alive and well on planet Earth, that not only do we deal with the influence of Satan, but we deal with the influence of multiplied numbers. I don't know how many of demons. We have God and angels on our side. We have the devil and demons against us. He's called the liar, the father of lies. The truth is not in him. He speaks lies to your mind, puts wrong imaginations in you, condemns you, tries to make you feel guilty continuously. Will work through anybody that he can find any way to work through to get at anybody that's trying to make any progress in God whatsoever. Amen? And you need to be educated about your enemy. And we have to make a decision that we are going to aggressively come against Satan. Aggressively come against him. Let me tell you something. If we are passive about an enemy like Satan, we are going to be in very, very, very serious trouble. Now, I didn't come here tonight to preach about the devil, but I want you to understand when this says the thief comes only in order to kill, steal, kill, steal and destroy. You have to know that Satan has a plan of destruction for your life. But I already told you in the very beginning of this meeting tonight before I even started teaching that according to the Bible in 1 John 4, 4, you have already overcome and defeated the agents of Antichrist because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. But you have to know that and you have to apply that authority. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you power. Not I might, I could be, hope so, maybe to some people. Behold, I have given you power to tread. That's an aggressive verb word. It means on serpents and scorpions. And I've given you power over all the power that the enemy possesses. And nothing shall by any means harm you. You have power. But you must exercise it. But I came, Jesus said. Boy, that's a message right there. But I came. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest, to destroy the works of the wicked one. The Amplified says, to loosen, dissolve, and destroy the works of the wicked one. Jesus came to set the captives free, to open prison doors, to heal broken hearts. You may come in with bondage, but you don't have to live with bondage all your life. And listen to me, if you've been hurt and mistreated, you don't have to spend your whole life in recovery trying to get over it. 
You learn the Word of God. You believe the Word of God. You receive the love of God. You receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You let go of the past and you press on to the good life that God has for you. Amen. The thief comes only in order to kill, 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 steal, and destroy. But I came that you might have, now watch it, and enjoy life. Woohoo! Woo! And have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. God wants us to have so much joy and enjoyment that other people just want what we have so bad. That's why we got to do something about all the sour faced, sad, mad Christians. We are supposed to be salt and light. Oh. We need to come against the enemy based on the cross, the word, the name, and the blood, and put him on notice now that he is no longer going to steal our joy. And not only are we going to have joy, but we are going to make a habit out of making other people riotously happy. John 15, 11 says, well, actually, all of John chapter 15 is about abiding in Christ. And then in John 15, 11, the Bible says, I've told you these things that my joy and delight might be in you. Now, Jesus says he wants his own joy and delight to be in us. I don't know how happy he is, but <laughs> pretty happy, probably. And I'd be happy to have a full load of his joy. And that your joy and gladness might be a full measure and complete and overflowing. I want you to get the, the words here. Abundance, overflowing, full measure. Not just a barely a little bit enough of something to get by the day and try to just make it. <laughs> but to be able to wake up in the morning and... I remember the first time I woke up in the morning and I, and I was able to say, I love my life. And it took a lot of years for me to get there. And I don't love my life because I'm Joyce Meyer, the TV preacher, and because everything in my life is perfect. The only part about my life you know is what I tell you and what you see from up here. But I have things that go on in my life just like you do that I could do without, that I don't care for. But I made a decision I guess now about 20 years ago, that whatever it took, I was going to learn how to enjoy my life. And I tell you what, it was quite a battle because I didn't have a lot of practice. And it's kind of a long story, and I had to, sometimes you have to start with your, you know, with your desire, like, okay, I want to enjoy my life. So now I've got to kind of back into this thing and find out why I'm not enjoying my life. You know, because... I mean, I can tell you, go home and enjoy your life, but if there's some things that aren't changed and adjusted, if you don't change your approach to some things and your thinking and maybe your schedule and, you know, a lot of different things, then you're still just giving the devil ammunition to steal your joy all the time. So I'm going to have to come at this from a few different angles this weekend, and then you may have to go home and do your own homework. But my desire this weekend is to stir up in you such a desire to enjoy every moment of your life. And I don't mean that you're going to enjoy every person that comes your way or that you're going to enjoy every circumstance that you have. I'm talking about enjoying your life and enjoying what God has given you, what he's blessed you with. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the person you're married to. Trust me, if you don't want them, there's somebody else that'll take them. <laughs> and they'd probably even be willing to take them as is because they're lonely and they're tired of being lonely. <laughs> I 
<laughs> we need to stop finding what's wrong with everybody and think about how blessed we are. Start enjoying what we have. Good grief. Okay, so Jesus said, I've told you these things, and the things he's been telling them is you need to abide in me, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me, abide in me. You can read it for yourself. It's John chapter 15, the first 11 verses. But what does the word abide mean? The word abide means to live, dwell, and remain. So if we learn to live, dwell, and remain, to abide in Christ, he says your joy will be full. That means he needs to be number one. Jesus is looking for a bride. He's interested in marriage, not a 45-minute date every Sunday morning. Come on. I go to church, 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 I go to church. Oh, if that is all there is to your relationship with God, you are one sad person indeed. Amen? You are the church. He lives in you. Yes, go to church, fellowship with other believers, be part of a local body. But don't make that the end all of your whole Christian experience. You can't let your Christianity begin and end in a church building on a Sunday morning. You need to take out of that place what you learn and get out in the world and act like a Christian and make people want what you've got. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. All over the Bible, in the epistles, the men who wrote the Bible under the direction of the Holy Spirit, over and over they told people to persevere with joy. Whatever you're going through, you got to keep your joy because that's your strength to get through it. Find something to laugh about. Go get a joke book and read jokes. Get around your funniest friend. Do something to make sure you don't get depressed and discouraged and down and sad and gloomy and sour because it only hurts you. Well, it can also hurt the people around you, but it hurts you more than anybody. John 16, 24, I love, 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 love this scripture. Ask and receive and your joy will be full. Oh my gosh, is that ever a scripture for workaholics? <laughs> Who are always trying to make something happen themselves. And all the controllers in the world. Come on now. Ask and receive that your joy may be full. Let me give you a little example of how to live wrong and how to live right. I was always the kind of person, if I thought you should do something and you weren't going to do it, then I was going to talk you into doing it. If I couldn't talk you into doing it, then I'd get mad at you if you didn't do it. It's called emotional manipulation. And so if I wanted Dave to do something and he wouldn't do it, if I didn't think it was the right thing that he, you know, his choice wasn't the right thing, then I'd try to convince him, convince him, convince him. And you know, really, with most people, the more you try to convince them, the more determined they get they ain't going to do it. <laughs> because most people don't like to be manipulated, and I didn't realize that all, all my convincing did was make him feel like I was manipulating him, and so he wasn't going to give in. Well, God gives us an answer to all that. Ask and receive <laughs> that your joy might be full. Now, there's another part to it. You have to be humble enough to think, I could be wrong. So God, if I'm right, you change their mind, and if they're not right, they still won't do what's right. That's really not my problem. That's between you and them. So I'm going to keep my joy and go on about my business. Come on, I'm giving you a new plan.
je kindertijd. Een tijd om te dansen in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan. En om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meermalen moeten verkopen... voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen, onze kinderen... Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee, toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long. die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden?
Het leven is te kort om te verspillen. Trek jezelf uit de sleur. Word actief en maak er iets van. Ontdek de bestemming voor jouw leven en wat God voor jou in petto heeft. Joyce Meyer heeft hierover een boek geschreven. Ik daag je uit. Ontdek, ga de uitdaging aan en bestel het boek via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en ontvang elke dag inspirerende uitspraken van Joyce op jouw Facebook. Open, direct en to the point. Kleine oases in je dagelijks leven. Lees mee, het is het waard. Alleen bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.